After 10 years of escalating tensions over Iran's nuclear program, it appears we are close to a deal between various world powers, including the United States and Iran, over its nuclear program. Here to discuss with me the implications of this remarkable turnaround is Rula Khalaf, the Middle East editor and foreign editor of the Financial Times. Rula, what is happening? This is such a turnaround from just 18 months ago when people were talking about a potential military strike by the Americans, maybe with the Israelis, against Iran over the nuclear program. Absolutely. This is a, this is a real moment. Um, this deal, I'm sure, has been in the works for the last couple of months, I would say. Of course, there have been a lot of uh, positive noises since the election of um, Mr. Rouhani in Iran in the summer. And I think that he very slowly changed perceptions of Iran's willingness to actually negotiate and negotiate seriously. This is the crucial moment, though, wasn't it, in the summer when, contrary to expectations, Mr. Rouhani a supposed moderate, yes. was almost allowed to win by the, uh, by, uh, the ruler uh, Ayatollah Khamenei. Yes, that's, that's very true. And I think that since then, it has become clear to U.S. negotiators in particular, because they, the U.S. plays a crucial role in these, in these negotiations, that there is a real possibility of, of a deal because of the impact of sanctions that have accumulated over many years and th that have really very dramatically hurt the Iranian economy. So what we're looking at now, though, is a limited deal. It's an interim deal. It's a deal in which Iran would essentially suspend what its nuclear activities and the ones that are of greatest concern to world powers. And during that time, this is, they're talking about it six months, during that time, an actual comprehensive agreement that would lead to um, a, a real resolution of this dispute would be negotiated. Well, let's just um, drill down there a bit. What do you think is necessary to win the confidence both of the U.S. administration, President Obama, and of course Congress, which would have to bless a, a such a deal? I think that the interim deal is needed for the, for the negotiators, for the Iranians and the Americans, because what, it's able to, what, what this says is for the next six months, Iran will not progress. The, great, the, the big fear has always been that while you're negotiating, Iran is actually moving uh, even faster Stealthily. with its new, exactly. So this gives breathing space. Will it be enough for the skeptics? I don't think so. I think we'll be hearing a lot of noises from Israel, from Saudi Arabia, and from, from Congress. Um, but, you know, what, is, what are the options in Iran? It's either, you know, this, this is a negotiation. Both mm. sides need to be able to agree on some compromises. And what the options of mi a military solution to this dispute are not in anybody's interest, really. Let's look at uh, the implications for the region, uh, starting with Saudi Arabia. There are a lot of grievances here that go that the Saudis are, are feeling right now. One is about Syria, because they were expecting the Americans to essentially launch military strikes, and that didn't happen. Instead, there was a chemical weapons uh, deal with uh, with the Russians. And the Saudis are also have always been extremely worried about the Iranians. The view in Saudi Arabia is that the Iranians play games. Mm -hmm. Is that you know they'll go maybe for an interim deal, but that in fact at the end of the day they absolutely want the bomb. And the noises that we've been hearing lately from from the Saudis, and this goes on and off essentially, is that that they, do, they too uh, could become a nuclear power. Uh, let's just talk briefly then about Israel, because they have uh, been very, very concerned. The previous uh, Iranian uh, president, Ahmadinejad, was um, ho openly hostile, uh, a Holocaust denial, uh, and really quite threatening to Israel. Where do you think, yes, Mr. I think Prime Minister I, Netanyahu stands? I think for Israel, this is an really an existential issue. Um, they are convinced that Iran and this regime, the problem for them is actually the, is, is the regime, and they don't believe that this regime can be trusted. Uh, and therefore, in their view, 
even more than uh, in Saudi Arabia. They think that what Rouhani is, is a facade, mm -hmm. that, uh, that the uh, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, who is the real ruler in Iran, mm -hmm. is just using in order to project a much more moderate image. But that at the end of the day, he's in charge and he hasn't changed. Final prognosis, do you think that we can see the prospects of a deal inside the next year and the risk of a war in the region uh, dissipating? I think nobody wants a war, at least beyond Israel and Saudi Arabia. And I think that the, the U.S. administration will do everything in its, in its power to try to get a deal this year. I think Iran has an interest in, in reaching a deal if it can maintain some form of enrichment. So I think the details are going to be extremely important. This will be m very, very difficult to negotiate. It's much easier to negotiate a six months deal where everything is reversible. So, Rula Khalaf, thank you very much indeed. The prospect, perhaps, of decades of hostility between the Iranians and the Americans going back to 1979 with the dep deposition of the Shah uh, and the taking of the hostages, perhaps a new rapprochement, but a big perhaps. Thank you.